Uh, let us have a word of prayer this morning. Almighty and ever loving God, we come before you this morning most thankful to you for who you are. You are the creator of everything. But more than that, you love us with a love that we can't even imagine. You love us when we're good. You love us when we're not so good. You love us when we're up. You love us when we're down. You love us in our sinfulness. You love us so much in our sinfulness that you've made a way for us to be forgiven, redeemed, and brought back into fellowship with you. We just thank you, Lord, for who you are. Uh, we give praise to you, Lord, that we can come and worship you and let you know how much we love you. We love you with all that we can, but even that is not enough. You ask us to love you with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. And Lord, even that is not enough because your love for us is so much deeper and so much greater. And we just praise you, Lord. And thank you, Lord. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Those things that we know we have done that, that hurt others and do not please you. Those things, Lord, that we might have done accidentally, mistakenly, not even thinking. And those things, Lord, that we even plan to do. And some of us even plan to do it, saying that we will ask for your forgiveness. Lord, have mercy on our soul. We ask for you right now, Lord, that you will bless all of those who are on our prayer list, all of those that we've named and all of those who we have not named, all of those who are in our hearts. We pray for our church, our church family. We pray for the leaders of our church. We pray for our community. We pray for the larger church. And we ask, Lord, that you will give us your continual guidance. You will give us the strength. You will give us the courage to stand up for you and stand up to all of this negativity and nastiness that we see all around us. Reach down and touch the leaders of this nation. Turn their hearts toward you so that they can govern your people with righteousness. Now, as we continue to worship you today, we ask you, Lord God, to guide us, strengthen us, come into each of our homes and make them a place of worship. We love you, Lord, and we give all of ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, we pray, and for his sake, amen, amen, and amen. Such a special way 
That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me. Such a special way, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Amen. 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 We thank Sister Shalene Cornish for blessing us with a song of praise to our Lord this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Almighty God. <clears throat> Our scripture reading this morning is actually going to start a little before uh, the printed scripture. But it's from Mark chapter 6. Then Jesus went about the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaim that all should repent. Then they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. That was verses 1 through 13. Beginning with verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. 
and they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many people saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of him. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Verse 53, when they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the word of God for the people of God. And all God's people said, thanks be to God. Let us pray, almighty and everlasting Father. We pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together will be acceptable in your sight. You are our Lord. You are our strength. You are our Redeemer. We ask, Lord, to take my mind and think through it. Take my lips that they may speak your word. So speak through them, Lord. And then take all of our hearts, set them on fire with your Holy Spirit to receive your message for each of us, that we might love you more and serve you better, doing your will to fulfill your purpose for us. This we pray in the matchless and comparable name of our Lord, our Savior, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Our message today is Jesus Christ, the Lord of compassion. I recently read an article by a woman who had grown up in New Zealand she grew up around sheep. And she said that her father was a world champion sheep shearer. And that he had designed the way that sheep shearing is performed across the world. She also relayed a story that she in turn had read about a sheep farmer who raised goats along with his sheep. And that he had noticed that the goat mothers would leave their little kid goats for hours and hours as the mothers went off to forage for food. But the ewes, the ewes, E-W-E-S, which are the mothers of the sheep, of the lambs, would never go further than earshot of their little lambs. In her article, she gave some very interesting characteristics of sheep that she had observed in her experience growing up around sheep. Uh, she said, first, sheep go astray very easily. If a sheep gets lost, it really has no way of finding its own way back home. Uh, that's why they needed a shepherd. Uh, that kind of helps us 
understand what Jesus said about leaving the 99 sheep in the flock and going off to find that one sheep that had wandered away because he knew that that sheep couldn't find its way back to the flock by itself. Secondly, she also said that sheep cannot protect themselves. They are defenseless, easy prey for predators. Uh, by the way, New Zealand has no predators for the sheep. They don't have bears and coyotes and mountain lions and which is why so many sheep are really raised in New Zealand. Uh, Middle Eastern shepherds, however, do have to watch out for their sheep because they do have uh, all of those kinds of predators. If you remember uh, the story of David, how he said that he would kill the bear and kill the lion who came after his sheep while he was serving as a shepherd. A shepherd must watch over their sheep all day long and then they have to guard their sheep in the sheepfold at night to make sure that some of those predators will not come and try to take one of those uh, one of those, one of their sheep from the sheepfold. They had to keep them safe and they had to be ready to rescue them from the predator if it became necessary. In addition, sheep cannot find their own proper food. She said, sheep will spend most of their day eating but they'll eat anything that they see, even poisonous weeds. That's why they need a shepherd. The shepherd leads them to safe green pastures. The shepherd provides good green and healthy pasture for his flock. Uh, she said the, ship, the sheep also can't even find water for themselves. And if a well dries up so that the water isn't flowing in the stream, the sheep will just stand and stare at a dry mud bed until they die. The shepherds must be a good shepherd and lead them to quiet, still, or easily flowing water, springs of water, so that the sheep can have water to drink. She says sheep also can't even clean themselves. Uh, most animals do clean themselves, cats, dogs, all of those clean themselves so that they will, will not get diseases. She said that sheep have to be docked, D-O-C-K-E-D, which means their tails have to be taken off. They have to be dipped in, in, in some kind of uh, uh, liquid so that they don't get infested with insects and ticks, which can negatively affect their health. She says they have to be crutched, which means that the wool around their tails has to be sheared off so that flies won't, won't gather there and they become what's called fly blown. They cannot keep themselves clean. The shepherd has to do that. Uh, sheep also do not function independently. They have what's called a flocking instinct. When a sheep 
wanders off on its own, a sheep becomes sad and cranky. If it gets separated from the rest of the flock, it becomes distressed. It will run up and down. If it's in a fence, it'll run up and down the fence, just bleeding, bleating, bleating. Or it will agitatedly just walk around or run around in circles. But when that shepherd goes and finds that 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 sheep that's wandered off by itself and brings it back to the flock, the, the sheep seems to become contented, happy, serene, calm down. Our scripture today says that as Jesus and his disciples went ashore. He saw this huge crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. The people were lost, looking for answers for their situation. Uh, one of the problems with lost sheep that this uh, lady who wrote this article did not mention was that sometimes when a sheep is lost from its uh, home flock, if you will, a sheep might see another flock somewhere and go join that other flock that might have shepherds who neglect the sheep, lead the sheep in the wrong direction, don't care for the sheep properly, feed them poisonous weeds and poisonous substances and will not protect them from predators. Uh, some sheep might even try to act as if they're goats. Goats being very independent in need of nobody else, not having a problem being out there all by itself. But goats like lost sheep sometimes also become cranky, have bad attitude. A lost sheep who sometimes acts like a goat might have a tendency to eat anything. Anything that they find and anything that they are offered, even things that are not good for them, often to their own detriment. A sheep that is not with the right flock or that's out there seemingly by itself will fall prey to predators, false shepherds, wolves, sometimes even in sheep's clothing, snakes who only want to kill them, steal from them. Mountain lions that just want them for themselves so that they can be happy and satisfied with how they taste. Predators that want to destroy them and everything that they are and everything that they could be as healthy sheep in a good flock. Jesus called himself the good shepherd. The good shepherd will take care of the sheep. The good shepherd has a master plan 
for the sheep's well-being. A good shepherd looks ahead and foresees the danger and number one, trains the sheep to know and to follow the good shepherd's voice so that the sheep learns not to leave, not to go astray. And if a sheep does go astray, the good shepherd goes and rescues that sheep. But he also disciplines that sheep by teaching that sheep what not to do. So that the sheep learns what not to do in the future. The good shepherd doesn't, doesn't drive the sheep. A good shepherd leads the sheep so that as he speaks and as he walks, the sheep gladly follow. And the good shepherd will guide the sheep around obstacles and around danger and lead them to good pasture, good grass, good water to drink. A good shepherd keeps the sheep clean by washing them, washing them, washing them clean. By shearing the sheep of all of the bad stuff and helping the sheep stay as the Bible says, unspotted from the world, keeping them from the dangers of diseases that can destroy them and sinful things that can lead them astray, sinful lifestyles. The Good Shepherd takes care of his sheep. Jesus says in that scripture, he says that because he saw that they were like sheep without a shepherd, the very next line in that verse says that he began to teach them many things. Say that again. He began to teach them many things. Uh, so that we got that one more time. He began to teach them one more time. Everything begins with the Word of God. Everything begins with the Word of God. In Romans, I think it's chapter 10, Paul is talking about faith and he says for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved but how can they call on one in whom they have not believed and how can they believe in one whom they have not heard and how can they hear without someone to proclaim him, Jesus. And how can they proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, Paul says, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. But all have not obeyed the good news, for Isaiah says, Lord, 
Who has believed our message? And Paul ends his pericope, his statement, with this verse. So faith comes from what is heard. And what is heard comes through the word of Christ. The word. The word. The word of God. The word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus says they look like they are sheep without a shepherd, so I'm going to give them the word. I'm going to teach them the word. Isaiah said it this way, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord remains forever. In Luke eleven twenty eight, we find that Jesus said, even more, those who hear the word of God and keep it are blessed. In John chapter 5, verse 24, we find Jesus says, very truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. The word, the word of God. Jesus, filled with compassion for the lost people, begins to, to, to address their need by giving them God's word. The world we live in. And our community is filled with people who are like lost sheep without a shepherd. The remedy is Jesus Christ, the living word of God. Jesus Christ, the living word of God. A songwriter some years ago said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other because Jesus is the way. And how can they know about Jesus? It's through his word. Are we up to the task of taking this remedy for what ails people in their lives for taking that remedy to them. Are we ready and willing to bring them the source of their healing? To bring them a source of their deliverance? Jesus Christ, the living Word of God. Are we ready and willing to show them by our life of love and the scriptures that can help them understand how to, to get out of that misery that they are in? You know, when Paul went was on his second missionary journey and he went to this town called Berea and he went to the uh, synagogue first as was his custom and he went to the synagogue in order to talk to them about salvation through Jesus Christ and he 
He, he started out because he was in the synagogue talking to the Jews and God-fearing Gentiles who may have been in the synagogue. He started talking to them and the word says in Acts, I think it's Acts 17, the word says that he talked to them about Jesus and they search the scriptures daily to see if what Paul was saying was true. The word. Are we prepared as we are trying to help people come out of their misery? Are we prepared to share scriptures, share the word of God with those we talk to? Our scriptures today again say that Jesus saw this huge crowd and he had compassion. Jesus was led to do everything that he did. From teaching, to feeding, to healing, raising the dead. Everything that Jesus did, he did it because he had compassion on the people. That doesn't mean that Jesus had pity on the people. That's, that, that word doesn't, that doesn't, really doesn't make, doesn't, doesn't make the, 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 the difference. He didn't feel sorry for them. He wasn't sympathetic. That word compassion means that he felt what they felt. He suffered as they suffered. He suffered with them. Their hurt was his hurt. Their pain was his pain. He couldn't look at them and say, I feel sorry for you and then go about his business and forget about it. No, that's not what compassion is. That's not what Jesus experienced. Not just a feeling of the moment. We are as saved believers in Jesus, we are the body of Jesus Christ. We are him in the world. If we are going to have compassion, we are going to have to experience the pain that other people experience. We're going to suffer with them, hurt with them. Be lonely with them. Feel the discomfort and the agony and the lostness of those around us with them and do something about it because we recognize that they are sheep without a shepherd. And we must walk in their shoes and try to help them understand that there is one who will bring them relief, but not just relief, who will bring them a, a release from all that they are going through. There is one, Jesus Christ. We have to be able to show them through our active, involved, intimate love and the word of God, the truth, the truth of what one songwriter wrote. He called it the wonderful words of life. You might know the words of this song. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of their beauty see. What are the what the wonderful words of life? Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all. Wonderful words of life. Sinner, 
Listen to the loving call, wonderful words of life, also freely given, wooing us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Members of the body of Christ, this third verse is to us, sweetly echo the gospel call. Wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all. Wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Wonderful words of life. You know, we have to be Jesus in the life of those who are like lost sheep without a shepherd. The only way we can do that is to have the compassion that Jesus has for those who Jesus brings into our space. Those that Jesus gives us the privilege of coming in contact with. We have to be compassionate and give them those wonderful words of life. Let the church say amen. For our closing prayer today, consider these words from the peace prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled, but ask to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen, amen, and amen. St. Mark, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in us that we might be Christ's compassion in and to the world and bringing the words of salvation, the wonderful words of life to those who need so much to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.